problems with this tripod. I don't know why. All of a sudden the phone will not stay in the clamp. It like the can't the clamp just squeezes down too hard and the phone pops out. And it's never done that before. It's only been the last couple of weeks. And it is driving me nuts. I don't know why. I mean I don't know why it's doing that. I know why it's driving me nuts. Um today I found an article I uh, found it a couple of weeks ago, and I've been holding on to it. Um, the article is titled, Anxiety is Another Stage of Grief. And it's written by Claire Bidwell-Smith, who is a grief counselor. And she wrote a book called Anxiety, the Missing Stage of Grief. And this really deals with grief as to the loss of a loved one. Um, you know, when someone close to you dies and you suffer from grief and, and how, you know, you go through the stages of grief and anxiety is one that isn't covered in that. And, you know, as a grief counselor, she's realized that anxiety is really a major stage in there. And I've realized that anxiety you know when you when you get diagnosed with something as major and traumatic as cancer or you know any other disease it's like you're going through grief it's like you've lost a loved one and so that is why I want to go over this because I do see a lot of a lot of what she's writing about so first of all she starts what is anxiety where does it come from and how can you gain control over it and why is it so frequently spurred by the loss of a loved one slash medical diagnosis <laughs> so um let's see um the one issue that she's encountered more than any other is anxiety following a loss and looking back on my cancer diagnosis and everything I've been through for the last year plus, anxiety has been a big issue. You can go back and look at my videos, you know, from the first one all the way through, and anxiety is there. Um, she says, we experience anxiety after a loss because losing someone we love thrusts us, thrusts us into a vulnerable place. And it's the same with a medical diagnosis. All of a sudden, your safety net, you know, that you've relied on forever is not there. You know, you have this medical diagnosis that you suddenly have to deal with and everything changes. Um, the first thing you need to know is that anxiety is more common than you may realize. Um, 18% of the population of the U.S., 40 million people, have suffered from anxiety in the last year. Um, and I know I've always been, uh, I've always dealt with anxiety. I get into certain situations and I can feel it. I tense up and start to get, <sighs> so um, even when, you know, like when I was in my 20s, and 30s I, I dealt with this um, so let's see the National Institute of Mental Health shows that 38% of teenage girls and 26% of teenage boys have an anxiety disorder that's high that's, that's sad <laughs> um, and then the good news is that anxiety is also highly treatable so the basics are um, anxiety is fear of something real or imagined. Specifically, anxiety comes from fear-based thoughts about things that are not necessarily occurring in the present moment or that may never occur. So this is where cancer diagnosis for me, you know, came in. Um, you know, all of a sudden I'm diagnosed with cancer and so I have these fears of what's going to happen, you know, and, okay, let me read further. 
Anxiety is a feeling of dread or foreboding. Anxiety can be as simple as a general sense of uneasiness, a feeling that all is not right, or it can be as specific as worrying that you have cancer or that the plane you are flying in will crash. We don't want to go there. <laughs> uh, it is a sense of danger, but not always a specific one that you can identify. Um, so this is where, like when I got the cancer diagnosis and then, you know, everything goes through your head and it still goes through me. You know, am I gonna have a place to live next month? Um, when you're first diagnosed, do you have to go through, you know, oh my God, I have cancer, am I gonna die? Um, you know, you have to go, you have to decide whether or not to have chemo and radiation and what you're gonna do. You have to tell people you're gonna, that you have cancer, you know, your family that you have cancer. That is extremely hard. And there are just so many things are you going to be able to work? Are you going to be able to maintain your health insurance to pay for all of these things? It, there's a lot of anxiety. <laughs> but then it says anxiety is also a practical, practical and useful emotion, such as like when you're cramming for a test in the school or getting ready for a big meeting at work. You know, um... So it helps us stay alert and present to our well-being. Okay. Um, and I know there's, there's like good stress and bad stress. You know, good stress being the helping us prep for the meeting or the test, and then the bad stress of, oh, my God, I have cancer. So um, it's when anxiety goes beyond these practicalities that it can become problematic. Worry is the mind's expression of anxiety. Yes, uh, worry. <laughs> um, let me turn the page. And anxiety can perpetuate itself. In other words, you can get anxiety from having anxiety. Because you're so stressed out, you get more stressed out. It's like, oh my God, I'm so stressed. Oh my God. Yeah, I've been there a lot the last year. Um, and you tell yourself, calm down, de-stress, don't let it get you. You know, you try to tell yourself, but it goes right back up because it's all there. You can't magically make the disease go away, so it's something you have to face all the time. And it's the same thing with the loss of someone you love they're gone. You can't not, you don't wake up in the morning and the memory of them is gone or they're back or anything else. It doesn't change. You know, they're still gone. And so you deal with it every single day, every minute of every day. And it's trying to get through one minute without thinking about it. And that's the hard part. So it says anxiety can look different for different people um, and it can also deceive you into thinking there is something physically wrong with you because of the forms anxiety takes. So symptoms of anxiety and panic attacks. I think I have panic attacks or I used to. Well, I probably still do. If I get into a really crowded situation, like I don't do the um, the Black Friday sales because it's too many people. I I just I can't deal with that many people, which is really weird because when I was in a teenager, I used to go to rock con rock concerts and I'd get right up in the front and I'd be just like packed in, and I had no problem with that. But as I got older, I I just don't like it. Okay, so symptoms include irregular heartbeat, dizziness and lightheadedness, shortness of breath, choking sensations and nausea, you know, and I hate having high collars too. When I was younger, I could wear turtlenecks. Now, I can't wear anything that goes past my collarbone. I cannot. Shaking and sweating, fatigue and weakness. Oh, there's something else. I've been so tired lately. 
um, chest pain and heartburn, muscle spasms, those cramps in my feet, um, hot flashes or sudden chills, hot flashes, okay. I thought those were, you know, menopause, but okay. <laughs> Tingling sensations in your extremities, a fear that you're going crazy. I have had that for many, many, many years, probably since I was a kid. A fear that you might die or be seriously ill. Well, I am, and I might, so there we go. I'm, I'm on the list. So at, at its most bakes, doesn't have tongue twisting on here. Um, at its most basic, anxiety is the sense of fear. And we can feel afraid of how the future has changed. Now, okay, in this instance, now that the most important person in our lives is gone. But when we're talking about disease, we can feel afraid of how the future has changed now that we've been diagnosed with this dreaded disease. And that is true because now that you've been, you know, like for me, now that once I was diagnosed, then I had to go through all of that. You know, am I going to have chemo or not? Am I going to have surgery or not? Am I, am I going to be able to keep my job and maintain the health insurance that I need to pay for all of the said chemo and surgery and everything else? Um, and at the time, I was new to the company. They, I had just three months before, four, three or four months before, I had changed companies. So it was a brand new job, no vacation time built up, no sick days built up. You know, it was like a really sucky time. <laughs> and, you know, there are so many things that go through your head when you get diagnosed. And so, yes, anxiety, fear, the whole the worry and not only that but you also have your family to worry about so you have anxiety over your family as well as your own health and so this is all what I'm you know coming down to is that this is all natural it's not something to be afraid of that you know oh my god am I like losing my mind because I'm so stressed out over this no you're not I you know like I said it's been over a year uh, and I still stress out so of course maybe I've lost my mind I, I, I would not doubt that at this point but so I will link the article down below um, I found it on nextavenue.org, which I've mentioned before in other posts. Um, it's a website that is, it caters to the elderly and retired. It's articles about um, health care, retirement, um, jobs for seniors, just everything like from 50, you know, from age 50 on up. Um, and so like end of life, family and relationships, mental health and well-being, caregiver support, aging in place, um, health, living, work, y yeah, they, and every once in a, I don't read every article, but you know, every once in a while there's something that catches my eye and this was one of them. So I will link it below, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.